Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to see about Acute Separative Otitis Media. This is a concise presentation for medical students. Acute Separative Otitis Media is an acute inflammation of middle ear by pyogenic organisms. It is distinguished from secretory that is serous otitis media by the presence of purulent fluid in the middle ear. Here, the middle ear implies middle ear cleft, eustachian tube, middle ear, attic, aditus, antrum and mastoid arcells. What is the etiology of this disease? Infants and children are more often affected, especially infants and children of lower socioeconomic group. It usually follows viral infection of upper respiratory tract, following which pyogenic organisms invade the middle ear. What are the roots of infection? Via eustachian tube. This is the most common route. The eustachian tube is shorter, wider and more horizontal in infants and younger children and thus this facilitates the disease. Via external ear, it can occur due to tympanic perforation. It can also be blood bound, but it is very uncommon. What are the predisposing factors for this disease? Recurrent attacks of common cold, upper respiratory, tra respiratory tract infections, and exanthematous fevers like measles, diphtheria, or whooping cough. Infections of tonsils and adenoids, chronic rhinitis, and sinusitis. Nasal allergy. Tumors of nasopharynx, packing of nose or nasopharynx for epistaxis, cleft palate. Uh, if you notice, all these interfere with the normal functioning of eustachian tube and thus facilitate the development of acute separative otitis media. What are the causative organisms? Streptococcus pneumoniae is the most common organism involved in acute separative otitis media. Other organisms involved are Haemophilus influenzae, Moraxella catalysis. These three organisms are the most common organisms implicated in acute separative otitis media. It can also be caused by some other organisms like Streptococcus pyogenes, Staphylococcus aureus and Pseudomonas aerogenesa. Among these, Haemophilus influenzae and Moraxella catralis are frequently beta lactamase producing strains. Okay, now let us look about the pathology and clinical features of this disease. The disease consists of five stages. The first stage is stage of tubal occlusion. It is due to edema and hyperemia of nasopharyngeal end of eustachian tube. Therefore, the eustachian tube is blocked. So, there will be absorption of air and air and negative intratympanic pressure. This leads to the retraction of tympanic membrane. The symptoms are mild hearing loss and earache. The signs include tympanic membrane is retracted with handle of malleus assuming a more horizontal position, prominence of lateral process of malleus, loss of light reflex that is, you cannot see the cone of light when you shine a torch and tuning fork tests show conductive deafness or conductive hearing loss. The next stage is a stage of pre-separation. Py pyogenic organisms invade tympanic cavity causing hyperemia of its lining. Inflammatory exudate appears in the middle ear. Tympanic membrane becomes congested. The symptoms are marked earache, hearing loss, tinnitus and fever. The signs include congestion of pars tensa, leash of blood vessels along the handle of malleus and at the periphery of tympanic membrane, giving it a cartwheel appearance. Later, whole tympanic membrane becomes uniformly red. Tuning fork tests show conductive type of hearing loss. The next stage is the stage of separation. In this, there is marked formation of pus in the middle ear and to some extent in the mastoid air cells. Tympanic membrane starts bulging to the point of rupture. Symptoms include excruciating earache, marked hearing loss, fever of 102 to 103 degree Fahrenheit, vomiting and convulsions in severe cases. The signs include tympanic membrane appears red and bulging with loss of landmarks, handle of malleus is not discernible, yellow spot on the tympanic membrane where rupture is imminent, tenderness over mastoid antrum, x-rays of mastoid show clouding of air cells. In pre-antibiotic era, that is, in earlier years, nipple-like protrusion of tympanic membrane with a yellow spot on its summit could be seen. The next stage is the stage of resolution. The tympanic membrane ruptures with release of pus and symptoms, of, and symptoms are subsided. Inflammatory process begins to resolve. Proper treatment or mild infection. In cases of proper treatment or mild infection, resolution without rupture of tympanic membrane takes place. The symptoms in this stage are the earache is relieved and the fever comes down. 
Signs include external auditory canal having a blood tinged discharge which becomes mucopurulent. Small perforation is seen in anterior inferior quadrant of past tensa. Hyperemia of tympanic membrane begins to subside with return to normal color and landmarks. The last stage is the stage of complication. It occurs in cases of high virulence of organisms or poor resistance of patient. In this stage, resolution may not take place. The disease spreads beyond the middle ear. The various conditions as a result of this include acute mastoiditis, subperiosteal abscess, facial paralysis, labyrinthitis, petrocytis, extradural abscess, meningitis, brain abscess, or lateral sinus thrombophlebitis. How do you treat a case of acute separative otitis media? Antibacterial therapy. It is indicated in all cases with fever and severe earache. The drug of choice is amoxicillin, 40 mg per kilogram per day in 3 divided doses. In cases of allergy to penicillin, erythromycin or cotrimoxazole can be preferred. In beta lactamase producing strains, coamoxiclav is prescribed. The antibiotic therapy should be given for a minimum of 10 days. That is, till tympanic membrane regains normal appearance and hearing returns to normal. Early discontinuation of antibiotic therapy can lead to secretory otitis media and residual hearing loss. Other modes of treatment include decongestant nasal drops like ephedrine. They relieve eustachian tube edema and promote ventilation of middle ear. Oral nasal decongestants like pseudoephedrine can be prescribed. Analgesics and antibiotics like paracetamol can be prescribed. Ear toilet. That is, the ear discharge is dry mopped with sterile cotton buds and then an antibiotic wick is placed. Dry local heat can be given to relieve pain. Ringotomy, that is, incising the drum to evacuate pus, is indicated in bulging drum with acute pain and incomplete resolution despite antibiotics and persistent effusion beyond 12 weeks. Thank you.